Hey everyone, Gabriel here, and in this video, I'm going to be doing a mini course on personal branding and showing you exactly how I was able to make over $450,000 profit in the last 30 days with my personal brand and my YouTube channel. Now, there's two main reasons why I'm making this video, and it's not just to show off. Number one is that I want to show you how powerful it is to build an online presence nowadays, to build a personal brand, especially if you're an entrepreneur. And I really think that it's one of the most important things you can do because it just opens so many doors and clearly the earning potential is massive. Now, the second reason why I'm making this video is that I want to be transparent with you guys. I have nothing to hide. And, you know, I get asked all the time, why are you selling a course if you make money with e-commerce already? And I hope that this this can answer the question, right? I mean, clearly there's a lot of potential with personal branding and selling a course. And it's not like you're scamming anyone. If you're actually doing it the right way, you're providing value, you're helping others and you're making money. It's a win win. And um, yeah, I want to be transparent with you guys and show you how profitable this has been for me. And um, yeah, so that's why I'm making this video. I hope that you guys are going to get a lot of value out of it. Now, first off, I want to show you the proof. So this is Kajabi. Uh, this is, you know, this is the, the software that I use to host my, my online course. And it's, it's, it's basically a software to host digital products. And this is where I have the stats for my course sales. As you can see, in the last 30 days, um, I sold 2,200 courses for total revenue of $483,000. And this is all in US dollars. So as you can see, the majority of the revenue came from just the first two days of the launch. I launched on February 7th and did $213,000 just that day and um, $125,000 the next day. And then it really slowed down after that because I had a big launch um, discount and I really hyped up the launch. So it's been really slow, um, slow, slow after that, but still getting daily sales like 5,000, 4,000 US dollars in sales. And so in the last 30 days in total, I was able to do 483,000. Now, if I refresh this, you're going to see that it is real. Um, these aren't fake stats and, you know, the same stats are popping up. Now, obviously, I did spend a little bit of money um, generating this, but it's really not a lot relative to the total amount. And I'm going to break down the expenses at the end of the video. But basically, the main expenses were just fees and ads, you know, retargeting people that already know who I am. And so that there you have it. That's the proof. And I don't want to waste any more time. Let's get right into the mini course. So to get started, I broke it down into three main steps that you need to do in order to start your own personal brand and monetize it. And I'm going to go over the three steps really quickly, and then I'm going to go more in depth and relate it to my own experience so that you guys get a better understanding. So number one is that you need to develop skills that are in high demand. This is the first and most essential part. You need to have some sort of value to share. And so the only way to do that is to develop skills and to get good at something, essentially. So you need to get good at something and develop skills. That's the first step. Now, the second step is to build your audience. Now, there's different ways to build an audience and you can do it. It doesn't have to be on social media. For example, you could start a blog. But nowadays, in 2019 and beyond, social media is the biggest opportunity for building an audience online. And so I would definitely recommend focusing on social media. And I'm going to go more in depth about that. But basically, you want to build an audience on social media by sharing value. So that's why that's where the first step comes in. Right. You need to be good at something so that you can share value uh, within that space on social media. Now, number three is identifying a problem that your audience has. So this is when you already have an audience. Then you want to identify a problem that your audience has and then develop a solution and then offer it to them. And this is how you monetize your audience. So that's the general formula. And now I want to go in depth into each step to show you how it how it played out for me and, you know, some more tips. So diving into the first step, which is developing high demand skills. So if you want a lot of growth potential with your personal brand and with your earning potential, you need to pick something that's in high demand. Now, a few examples of something that's always going to be in high demand money and career related skills that's always going to be in high demand so that's where i fall into i'm selling a drop shipping course right now and so this is people who are trying to make more money so there's always going to be a ton of demand within that niche you know people trying to learn how to make money by themselves or people trying to advance their career that's another thing that you could do um so if you're really good at like say accounting if that's your career you're really good at accounting you could start your own personal brand around accounting by sharing value on how people can advance in their career as accountants. That's just an example. So anything money career related, that's always going to be in high demand. Um, health and weight loss, always going to be in high demand. You know, you can build your personal brand about how to like lose weight or how to stay healthy. Um, calisthenics, you know, whatever you're into, you can grow your personal brand around if it's in high demand. Now, you can also do something that's more niche as well. Um, you know, like mindfulness, photography, those are still big enough that you can build a personal brand around and you'll have a massive potential audience that you can reach. So I say high demand skills, high demand skills are the ones that you can really monetize 
um, to the fullest. So, you know, my example is a great example. I'm in the money career related niche. So, you know, making money at home, that type of thing. And that's one of the most explosive niches, right? There's a ton of people trying to get into this every day. And so my skills are in are in extremely high demand, which is why I was able to do such big numbers um, with my course. Now, so that's the first step. You need to develop high demand skills. Now, for me, it was digital marketing and dropshipping. That's obvious if you watch my videos. And so if you look at the Google trends for dropshipping, you'll see that it's like a massive, it's peaking like crazy right now. And we're getting to the, the maximum search interest that there's ever been in dropshipping. So my timing was perfect. And that's why I was able to do such big numbers is because of my skills, the skills that I developed over time are in extremely high demand right now. And so I can, I can monetize them by, you know, because I have an audience, I can monetize those skills. And so... Um, my timing is really perfect on that, but I did not learn these skills overnight. It's not just something that I decided, you know, one day I'm going to start a dropshipping YouTube channel and I'm going to start making money that way. That's not how it happened. I, I learned my skills over years. And so you need to be passionate about what you're doing in order to be consistent. Now, I just want to share with you kind of my journey with e-commerce and dropshipping. So my first attempt in e-com was in 2013 when I was 15 years old and I did print on demand phone cases and it was a big failure. Um, I had no clue what I was doing, but you know, I, I wish I could show you a screenshot of the website. Unfortunately, I don't have that anymore. All I could find was something that I shared on Facebook. So this is just like kind of proof that this is actually true. Uh, you can see September 11, 2013, I was sharing to my Facebook friends, go cases, the best iPhone cases. And this was my first e-commerce website and it was a complete failure. Um, now, after that, I gave up on e-com for a while and I started promoting affiliate marketing offers. Um, and this is a little screenshot from a forum. As you can see, this is in 2014. And I was um, this was a journey to $5,000 per month, which I completed. So I was able to reach $5,000 per month in profit um, when I was, you know, I was 15 years old and I was just doing affiliate marketing offers. And this is when I learned to use Facebook ads. This is when I learned a lot about digital marketing. And so at 15 years old, I had already spent $50,000 or more, I'm not sure exactly how much, but on Facebook ads. And for a while, I only know I only knew how to boost how to boost posts, right? So that gives you an idea of um, how little I knew back then, and how long it took me to to learn everything that I know now. So a year or two after I started making money with affiliate marketing, I knew that I wanted to go into dropshipping and into e-commerce, and I knew that's what I wanted to do. But I didn't really know what I was doing, and I didn't know where to start. And for some reason, I thought that it'd be a good idea to start a blog about dropshipping, to start teaching people how to start their own dropshipping business. And so um, I was basically searching all over the web for articles, learning at the same time. And then I would take all the information that I learned and I put it into a blog article and I would start, um, you know, I would start posting a ton of articles like this one. So this was a screenshot from my blog. Um, this is from Web Time Machine. So it looked a little bit a little bit better than this when it was actually hosted online, but it's not hosted online anymore. But this is basically what it looked like. So beginner's guide, three essential steps to launching a profitable dropshipping business. And I would write these long 2000 word articles. And then, you know, you had the little bio about Gabriel St. Germain. Um, this is me when I was 17. And you know, almost no one read the blog because I had no real value to share. Essentially, all I was doing is I was taking information from different sources, um, from different sources, and then putting it into one and making it my own. And that's really you're not really adding any value there. Um, the only thing that did help is that I learned a lot about dropshipping through writing all of these articles about dropshipping, right? And so, although I hadn't done it myself, um, this was a great learning experience, and I don't regret it. Um, but you know, this is why I showed you the first, the, the three steps at the start of the video. The first step is developing high demand skills and essentially getting good at something before you start sharing value, right? And so that's what I did wrong here is I, I skipped to step number two um, and I tried to build my personal brand right away without actually doing it myself. And so that was a bad, that was a bad idea, needless to say. Now, if we go to the next slide, this is when I finally found success with e-commerce. So this was in early um, 2017 at 18. I was in university studying engineering and I started this brand Beauty Charcoal and it went on to do seven figures uh, and it did really well. And so uh, a year later I dropped out of school and I started, I started new stores and eventually I started my YouTube channel because all of this led to me having value to share on YouTube, right? Um, from you know starting my first store in 2013 with print on demand phone cases and then learning about Facebook ads with affiliate marketing and then writing all these articles about drop shipping and then you know actually having my hands-on experience with beauty charcoal and starting a, a profitable drop shipping business, a successful one. All of that led to me actually having value about the topic um, a, a lot of value to share on the topic. And if I didn't do all of this, I wouldn't have had value to share and my YouTube channel wouldn't have grown so explosively. So now the second step is building an audience within your niche by sharing value. 
So the first thing you need to do is you need to pick one main social media platform that you're going to focus on. So for me, that was YouTube. Now, you could also do something like Instagram. Instagram is good or Twitter. Um, YouTube is really good because it does... Um, if you understand how it works, it's relatively easy to get started and to start getting a lot of views on your video, and then it really snowballs. All you need to do is stay consistent. So YouTube, I think, is a great place to start, but it does depend on your niche. For, for some niches, YouTube isn't um, ideal. But for me, that was YouTube. Now, the first thing that I would recommend is quality over quantity when it comes to creating content. You definitely want to make quality content instead of just making a ton of content. And I'm going to show you um, my channel after this slide. I'm going to show, I'm take you inside my channel just to show you that I really did focus on quality over quantity. Um, I didn't focus on making one video every single day just to pump out content. I focused on making one a week. But each video that I produced, I tried to make it value packed, um, actually useful, and better than the other videos out there, so that it has a chance of going viral and doing better than the existing videos with the algorithm. And that brings me to. Um, and I just put here actually no one cares about your vlogs and I put this because um, I don't mean just about vlogs but I see a lot of youtubers who are trying to grow a personal brand grow a channel and they put out a lot of content that no one really cares about right um, that doesn't really um, a good way to put it is would someone search on YouTube for that video like that's what I think about when I release a new video is would someone search on YouTube for that video is this some is this you know a video that would interest people that don't even know about me or is this only something that my subscribers would care about and um, that doesn't really have a chance of going viral and so this is something that you want to think about when you're creating content and unless I mean some people just genuinely like creating vlogs and videos that um, just engage their audience which is fine but in my experience the best way to grow your channel is just to create content that can go viral and that people would search about on that, that people would search for on YouTube even if they don't know who you are and so definitely quality over quantity now this brings me to the next step which is understanding the algorithm so whatever social media platform you choose you need to understand how it works um, and how how content gets discovered on that platform now I'm not an expert for other platforms but for YouTube it's relatively simple how it works um, there's two main factors number one is your click-through rate so this is basically when YouTube starts suggesting your video so you know on the home page or in suggested videos wherever start wherever YouTube starts suggesting your video once it does start suggesting your video it's gonna start measuring how many people are actually gonna click through so let's say it shows it to a thousand people it's gonna see how many people out of those thousand people actually clicked on your video versus all the other videos out there and if people click on your video um, often right if you have a high click-through rate that tells YouTube that they should keep suggesting your video and so they're gonna keep suggesting videos that get clicked on a lot and so that's the first step is you need to make videos that are clickable and you can break that down further there's two main things that it comes down to to make a video clickable number one is your title so you need to have a title that people are interested in that makes people want to click and the second thing is your thumbnail so you need to have a thumbnail that also entices the person to click and so those are the two main things you need to, under, um, to understand about click-through rate and the second part of the algorithm is watch time so how, how much of your video are people actually watching? Are people just clicking on your video and then leaving right away? Or are they watching 90% of it, 75% of it? And if people click through, if the click through rate on your video is high and then people watch a long, like a long part of your video, if they watch the majority of your video, your video is gonna do really well and YouTube is just gonna keep suggesting it over and over and over again until these metrics start going down. So until this click through rate starts going down because either too many people have seen it or because the topic's just not relevant anymore or if people stop watching it, um, watching the majority of it right so these aren't the only two metrics that you really need to care about when you're trying to make your videos go viral on YouTube click-through rate and watch time and so um, once again I'm gonna take you into my channel in a sec just to show you how I applied this knowledge but um, you should definitely understand this now another thing you should do is you should study viral content within your niche to learn what type of videos you should be making and so this doesn't mean just you know copy the top videos that you've seen but you should be going onto you know your main competitors channels or other personal brands within your niche um, see what content went viral for them right and this can just give you an idea of what people are interested in seeing nowadays what type of content can go viral and then you can take that information and then um, you know mash it up with your own ideas and basically create um, variations of viral content so uh, that doesn't really make sense but basically what I'm saying is don't just copy people's viral content but notice at what type notice what type of content goes viral and then try to replicate it with your own ideas with your own understanding of what people would be interested in and so 
Um, that's that's another great way to do it, right? And that's how I did it for my channel. Um, I, I only made videos that I thought had the potential to go viral. And a lot of them actually did go viral for you know the niche that I'm in. Obviously, they didn't get millions of views, but for dropshipping, a lot of my videos did go viral. And the way that you need to, uh, another thing you need to do is you need to come up with your own ideas based on what's happening within your niche. So if you're really active, so for my example, within the dropshipping niche, I've been, I'm very active in the dropshipping niche. So I know the concerns that people have at a certain time, or I know the big news that are coming out. And so based on that, I can make content that I know would interest a lot of people and would get a high click through rate. So um, I'm going to show you examples of that as soon as I switch to my YouTube channel. Now, the last point I have on the slide is modern SEO. SEO means search engine optimization. Modern SEO is sharing the most value possible. So back in the day, there was a bunch of different tactics to get your videos ranked and, you know, all that type of thing. Nowadays, none of that applies anymore. The algorithms like Google has gotten so smart that the only way that you're going to get your videos ranked number one for a topic is by providing the most value. Like that's really what the, 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 the algorithm is organized around. It's organized around providing the most value to the end user for a specific query. So if someone say, if someone searches dropshipping, Google's goal is to show them the absolute best, most relevant, most valuable video on that topic possible so that the user is happy, so that the user has a good experience on their platform. And so nowadays, all you need to focus on is providing the most value, providing the best customer experience. And if you do that, YouTube, Google, whatever, is going to help you by showing your videos more. And that's how you're going to gain traction. So really, all you need to focus on nowadays is sharing the most value possible. And that'll help get your videos ranked. That'll help your your channel get traction. So this is my YouTube channel here, and it was all grown organically. I guess I get asked that question a lot, like, do you run ads for your channel to grow your channel? And this was all grown organically by YouTube recommending my videos. And now the first thing you, you'll notice is that I only have 23, 23 videos. Yeah, so I only have 23 videos, and I have 76,000 subscribers. So obviously, um, I definitely um, really did quality over quantity in terms of content, right? Um, I focused on producing high quality content instead of producing a lot of content. So I only have 23 videos, but a ton of those videos went viral within my niche. So I just sorted by the most popular and you can see I have some videos. This one has 460,000 views. This one has 224,000 views, 151,000 views, 131,000. Um, you guys get the point. So I have, I have six videos over a hundred thousand views and this one's about to cross it. And so I really focus on making the videos that can go viral. That's like I said. And just to show you a few of the things that I was talking about in practice. So number one was the the high CTR, the high like the, the YouTube algorithm. So the two steps, the two factors for the YouTube algorithm is number one, click through rate, and number two, watch time. So in terms of click through rate, um, I would I, I write titles that I think are very relevant to the industry that I'm in right now. So for example, this video here, best alternatives to AliExpress in 2019. So I posted this video at a time where a lot of people were, you know, well, a lot of people were getting annoyed of AliExpress. A lot of people didn't really know that there were alternatives out there to AliExpress. And a lot of people were getting into dropshipping and were using AliExpress and were struggling to fulfill their orders. And so I made this video, best alternatives to AliExpress. So this title, first of all, is very, um, you know, it makes you want to click on it if you're in the dropshipping space because you know, what are the best alternatives to AliExpress? People don't like using AliExpress. And then the thumbnail, I'll, if you look at all my thumbnails, um, I have a very similar layout for all my thumbnails. And a lot of people think that my thumbnails don't look very nice. And I agree, they're not the most, you know, they're not the most uh, well, well designed thumbnails ever, but they do get people to click. And so there's a very simple formula that I use in my thumbnails. Um, I use white text um, with green color to make some parts of the text stand out. So, you know, like starting, um, numbers, things like that. I make it stand out with the green. I have a black background and then I always have a picture of my face. And the reason why is that it's been proven that having a picture of your face on a thumbnail makes it, um, you know, makes it more likely that people are going to click on it. People like we're social creatures and we relate to faces. And so if you see a face in your thumbnail, in a thumbnail, you're more likely to click on it. And so that's really all I did for all my thumbnails, right? I put a face of me and then um, some text here that tries to be attention grabbing and then a title that's relevant to the space that I'm in. And that's the formula. And then the second part is actually having good videos. And so that's a little bit harder to do. Um, I mean, I can't really give you guys tips on how to do that, but the best tip is really just to have value to offer, right? That's why the step number one is developing high value skills and essentially getting good at something. Um, if you're good at something and you have a lot of value to share, your videos should be value packed, right? And people are going to watch them all the way. 
And so um, that's basically what I did. And if you see, I really focused on making only viral videos instead of making a lot of videos. So almost all of my videos are videos that people would search for, right? Um, a free dropshipping course, um, best alternatives to AliExpress, right? A lot of people are going to search that up. Um, easiest way to start dropshipping from scratch. Um, you know, one product dropshipping. I saw that there was a big trend that people were, you know, searching for one product dropshipping. Um, I capitalized on that. So, you know, I, I don't want to go too in depth about this, but you guys get the point. Now, the third step of this general formula for, you know, personal branding and making money with it is monetization. Once you have your audience, that's when you need to monetize it. And so first tip is that definitely don't don't worry about monetization until you have your audience, right? Um, when I started my YouTube channel, I did not plan to release a course or whatsoever. Um, I didn't I, I did plan to monetize it with affiliate marketing, which, you know, um, I, I did make a bit of revenue with affiliate marketing, but really I shouldn't have, I should have worried, I shouldn't have worried about monetization at all when I was first starting out and you shouldn't when you're starting out. It's just not important at the start to monetize your audience. You should just focus on growing your audience instead. Once you do have a large audience, um, that's when you should start thinking about monetization, right? Because if you don't, then at that point you're just, um, wasting an opportunity. And so, Focus first on growing your audience, and then once you have your audience, that's when you need to start thinking about how you want to monetize it. Now, there's different ways to monetize your audience. You can use affiliate marketing. Um, you can, you know, there's you can get paid just by YouTube ad revenue. Those are the basic ways: YouTube ad revenue, then affiliate marketing, and then like brand deals. That's like the traditional way. But the best way to do it, if you want to make a lot of money, is to create your own product. So, you know, it can it can be your own course. You know, that's what I did. I created my own course. Uh, you can, you know, write a book if you want. You can do a physical product. I'm going to show you some examples of all of this um, after the slide. But that's what that's another thing you can do. You can do a physical product, even if with a personal brand. That's something that can work well. Uh, you can do consulting, right? If you if you're really uh, if you have a high demand skill and a lot of people want consulting with you, you could do high ticket consulting. So that's another thing you can do. But if you really want to get the most out of your audience, you need to sell your own product. You can't just rely on other people's product with affiliate marketing or ad revenue, right? Ad revenue is good money, but um, it's really a fraction of what you could be making if you had your own product. So that's the first thing you need to figure out. Um, you need to create your own product. And how do you come up with an idea for your product? What you need to do is you need to identify a pain point that your audience has. So you need to know your audience and know what they want, know what their problems are, and then identify a problem that they have and offer them a solution with your product. Now that's the general that's the general way that you can do it. Um, and it, it usually works well in most cases, right? Like sometimes it won't necessarily be a pain point depending on the niche. Like if you have like a really, I don't know, if like you're just a really famous YouTuber or something in like a super general niche, um, maybe you can just sell like merch. It doesn't have to be something that solves a problem. But in most cases, if you really want to leverage your audience and make a lot of money, um, you need to identify a pain point that your audience has and then offer them a solution. And so in my case, for my audience, the pain point was not being able to succeed with dropshipping despite taking multiple courses and watching videos on YouTube, etc. And so this is that, that was the case for a large portion of my audience, right? A large portion of my audience, um, they wanted to succeed with dropshipping and they've taken courses, they've watched all the videos, but they haven't succeeded. And the reason that I know this is that I engage with my audience. I have, you know, Facebook groups where I talk to my audience. Um, I engage in the comments. And so I, I saw that they had this pain point. And to me, that was the best opportunity to monetize my channel. And so I offered a solution, which was a case study based course on one of my stores. And so I offered this solution and I'm now selling it on, you know, I'm, I'm still selling it right now. And I can keep selling this solution until, you know, until that, that it's still a valid solution and still until it's still a problem that my subscribers have. And so that's, that's how you want to think of it. You want to think about what problem does your audience have? How can I, you know, how can I improve their, their situation? How can I offer value to them? All right. So now that I've gone over the theory, I want to show you some examples of this in action. So the first example is my YouTube channel. So if you're not familiar with my YouTube channel and my course, um, this is basically how I set it up. So I have my YouTube channel where I shared a bunch of videos and then in the description for all my videos, you can see there's a link to the course. So right here, and then I also have a free course playlist, um, which I, you know, I, I promote that link, which is, you know, my best videos in a playlist. And at the end of the playlist, I have a video hey, um, where I offer the course. I tell them about my course, which is a case study based course, um, revealing one of my stores. And then, you know, I offer them that course at the end of my video playlist once they've already taken in, you know, free content. And that's the key here is you have to give them, you have to give people free value first, and then you can ask for money. 
but never ask for money right away. And so that's the example with me. And I'm selling this course for $297. And, you know, I showed you the stats at the start of the video of how much I made with this course so far. And this is, you know, that's that's how I did it. I found this pain point that my audience has, and then I offered them a solution, which is a case study video course um, that I'm selling for $297. Now, I want to share another example of this in the money-making niche. And so this is Ricky Gutierrez. He's a day trader, and he makes YouTube videos about trading, so I think he posts every day. And he just posts his trades every day and, you know, videos on, you know, trading tips and things like that. And so he posts these consistently. He's been doing this for a while. He has 511,000 subscribers and then he promotes his course, which is kind of like a paid group um, where, you know, you can trade with Ricky every day. You can see his trades. You can see him trade live and you can also, you know, you get a course teaching you how to trade. And so this is a great example of that, right? I mean, he I don't know if he followed the three steps exactly, but to me, it seems like he did a pretty good job. He learned how to trade. He got good at it and then he had a skill to share and then he started sharing value within that niche, within the day trading niche. And then he grew his personal brand and now he found a pain point and offered them a solution with this paid course and group. Okay, so the first two examples I showed you were pretty obvious. They're in the money making niche, you know, drop shipping, day trading, and that's like the biggest niche for selling online courses. But I really want to show you that this personal brand thing can work with anything that you're passionate about. And so this example is a little different. So this is Charisma on Command. Um, I'm sure some of you have seen this channel before. It's a very popular YouTube channel, 2.3 million subscribers. And they talk about charisma, how to be more charismatic, and they do breakdowns of charismatic, um, you know, charismatic figures in movies and stuff like that. And now they sell a course called Charisma University. And so we can check it out. Um, charisma University, um, you know, it's a long sales page here. You know, they talk about how to be more charismatic, how to, you know, get more girls, things like that. And that's a massive pain point for a lot of people. And a lot of people who are watching this Charisma channel, they're probably shy. Um, you know, they, they don't feel like they're very confident. And that's a big problem that this audience has. And so he's identified that pain point and now he's offering them the solution, Charisma University. Um, you know, I don't even know how much this costs. Um, and it's, this is a really long sales page, but you know, it has all these modules, uh, first impressions, confidence, expert conversation, um, blah, blah, blah. And you know, let's see where the, the price is. Join Charisma University. Um, so you see it's a hundred dollar course uh, and then you get a members area, a hundred plus videos, um, daily action guides. So, you know, it's basically just a course and, you know, it's really not the typical personal brand niche that you think of. It's not like drop shipping or making money online. You can really do this with anything that, you know, people are interested in. And so I think this is a really good example. And I'm going to show you a few more and then I'm going to end this video. So I have another cool example to show you here. This YouTuber is called Lavender and she, she basically makes videos about um, lifestyle, kind of life planning, goal planning, self-care. Um, health and wellness, meditation, you know, uh, minimalism, that type of thing. You can see the type of video she makes, like productivity, living your best life, how to get your life together. Um, you guys get the point. And she's built this really big following over time. So she has 810,000 followers. And she monetized that audience by selling a physical product rather than selling like a course or something. And I think this worked quite well for her. So she's, she sold these notebooks, basically. Um, she created these notebooks for like goal planning. So if you watch the video, um, these notebooks basically, um, all right, there's really no, all right, that might not be the best way, but if I go on her website, you might be able to see better. Yeah, this is better. So what can I do to live my theme in 2019? How do I want to feel in 2019? How, what, what do I want to invite into my life in 2019? Um, you know, really this type of like this, this really resonates with her audience. This might seem a little weird to you, but her audience is super passionate about this type of thing. And so what she did is she promoted these two, these two journals. Like these are two separate journals that you can buy, um, 38 and 26. And so she promoted both these journals to her audience, um, at the end of last year and at the start of the new year, right? Which is the perfect time for something like this. It's when people are starting to think of their new year's resolutions, their goals for next year, all of that. And, you know, she did a big marketing push to her audience for these journals. And I think she did really, really well. Um, you know, if you look at the traffic stats with similar web, she doesn't have like crazy traffic stats. She did 153,000 um, visitors in November, 145,000 in December, and then uh, 85,000 in January. So, you know, not crazy traffic stats, but the people who are coming to this website are very passionate 
um, about what she's talking about. They, they really like her. They want to support her. And so she must have gotten a lot of sales of these notebooks. And the reason I know about this is that my sister actually bought these notebooks. Um, and she's, you know, she's one of her subscribers. And so I really think that she made a killing with this. And I think it's a cool example of how you can monetize your personal brand with physical products as well, not just um, a course or something like that. All right, so I want to show you just one last example before I end this video. So this guy here is a photographer and he makes, um, you know, he makes photography videos and he has a pretty big focus on wedding photography, I believe. You know, I don't follow this guy or anything, but I just did a bit of research to try to find some examples. And this is a pretty good example. So um, this video, this is one of his videos, wedding photography, where he gives free value on, you know, um, what it's like to be a wedding photographer and all that. And, you know, behind the scenes, it shows you like his camera settings and everything. So this is like a really cool video for people who are into photography, wedding photography. And then he offers um, a little upsell, right? So five exclusive behind the scenes wedding day videos. So people who really enjoyed the free stuff, um, he invites them to um, a paid, you know, to paid content. And th this is five behind the scenes wedding days um, that you can buy for $50. So it's basically more like longer content like this. Um, he's basically just selling it. That's that's his audience, right? He knows his audience. His audience are people who are wedding photographers. They want to get better at it and they want to see what it's like. And so he sells them a little course on wedding photography. And I think he has more than just this course. If we go here, Taylor Jackson courses, um, I think he has a few courses, right? So there you go. Advanced wedding photography marketing, um, five behind the scenes wedding days, make money with your travel and landscape photography. So, you know, he just makes free content on YouTube and then he sells them these um, relatively cheap courses online on how they, they can take things to the next level. So another great example. Now, before I end the video, I want to quickly go over the expenses to show you that I really did make 450,000 profit in the last 30 days. So um, the sales in the last 30 days were 483,000. Um, I spent 9.2K on ads. So main, almost just all retargeting ads, uh, retargeting on Facebook and retargeting on YouTube. So I spent 9.2K on that and then fees. So these are just payment processor fees. It came out to about 18K and then my team expense. So I have two people working on this project right now, you know, support and then someone um, in the group and that comes out to 3.5K. And so my net profit is 452K um, in those 30 days. Now, obviously I'm not gonna start making 450K every month. The reason that I was able to do so much in the last 30 days is because I launched the product and I, you know, I built up the launch and so, um, this is not like my monthly income or whatever, but I was able to do 450k in the last 30 days profit All right, everyone. So that is pretty much it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it I know it's different than the type of video. I usually make I usually only talk about drop shipping and e-commerce But I do want to I do want to start diversifying my channel a little bit and I thought that you know You're all entrepreneurs and so this is something that you should be interested in personal branding It's a really big thing that's happening nowadays uh, we live in the era of like fame leverage, you know, Kylie Jenner just became the first self-made billionaire and she did that through pretty much personal branding, right? Through leveraging her audience, leveraging her fame. And so this is really important nowadays. And um, yeah, I hope that you found it interesting. Um, if you did, leave a thumbs up. And if you aren't yet, make sure to subscribe. I would appreciate it. And let me know what you thought about this video in the comments below. And on that note, I will see you guys next time.